So if MR accurately predicted the law of reflection, let's see if we can get refraction right. Refraction. I assume it's pronounced Fermat, by the way. Maybe it's Fermat. I don't know. So to do refraction, we are going to do a little geometry just like before. So here is our interface. And now we do have to think carefully about the index of refraction because we are going from one medium to another. So we'll call up here n equals 1. We'll call down here n equals 2. And we're going to say we want to get some light from point A to somewhere around here in point B. And you might say, what if the light doesn't want to go there? Well, it will go there. See, if we think of this as a point source, the light's spreading out. The light will go in all directions, and it's got to go somewhere. Somebody has to make it to point B. So there is some path that light will take from point A to point B. And we're going to set this up uh, similar to last time. Let me get these out of the way, put these way over here. Because we're going to say this is at a height A above the surface, and this is at a, a low, a subterranean height B. Uh, below the surface, and we don't know where the light's going to go. Let's just pick any point along here where it's going to go. So you can see I guessed what I kind of suspect it's going to do, but I could have drawn this anywhere because what we're saying is this is the origin and this is at position X. We're saying it goes through the surface at position X and this is position C. So the distance again, like last time, is C is the horizontal distance from point A to point B. Okay, and I'm going to draw this out of the way as well. My B is in the way, here we go. So, there we go. Okay, that's everything. So, it actually sets up very much the same. We want to know what is delta T from A to B. Well, we divide it into these two chunks. We call this point C and we say, well, it's just the distance A to C over the speed plus the distance uh, C to B over the speed of the wave. Okay. And then we start doing some geometry and we say um, AC, well, it's just like last time. We have A here, we have uh, X there. It's the square root of A squared plus X squared over the speed plus uh, c to b is the square root of this little piece, which is c minus x squared plus b squared. So plus the square root of b squared plus c minus x squared, again, over v. And we want to do the same thing. We want to minimize that time. We just calculated the time to get from a to b. Fermat says it should be the fastest time, the minimum time. So d delta t, a to b, um, dx. And we're doing dx because we're saying which path does it take. Let's try all the paths and figure out which one has the minimum time. And oh my gosh, this looks very familiar. Having a flashback. It's um, the v stays in the bottom and uh, you get one half. So the two comes down here, there's the v. And it's to the minus one half, so that's like a squared plus x squared in the bottom. And we put a 2x up here like that. And this one, we also have a 2 because it's a 1 half in the derivative. And we have our v down here. And it goes to the minus 1 half, which is like putting it in the square root in the bottom, plus c minus x squared like that. In the top, we put the derivative c minus x. And then finally, the derivative of this gives us a negative sign. It's all exactly the same. Right. Oh, and the twos still cancel. Even more of the same. Right. And then we look at it and we say, hey, these uh, numbers correspond to angles that I care about. So here's your normal. Here's what we usually call theta incidence. Or well, in this case, let's call it theta 1 because we're in, um, uh, we're in medium 1. Let's call this theta 2 because we're in medium 2. Or you could call it the angle of incidence and angle of refraction or the transmitted angle. 
Uh, let's see, x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. If this is the angle, this is x, and this is square root of a squared plus x squared, so that's again sine theta 1 over v. And uh, this is equal to 0, so these two things are equal. And this one is the c minus x. It's basically that position over the hypotenuse. So it's also the sine of that angle. So that's sine theta 2 over v. And it's going to turn into Snell's law because the v's are not the same. Right? That's the key. You're going at a velocity here, the speed of light over n1, and you're going at a velocity here, the speed of light over n2. So instead of writing it as v's, it's c over n1, and this one is c over n2. So you can see you get rid of the c's and you get Snell's Law. So Willibord von Snellius would be pleased. <laughs>